Alright, welcome to the Winning Arts Center Hot Shop, guys. This is Doug Taylor. My name is David Spurge. We're going to work together with most of the last few guys today, and today's Doug's day to be the gaffer. Today he's going to do the main shaping tool. This is going to be Doug's artwork, and as the assistant, I'll be helping him out with an extra set of hands. So right now he's taking a clear gather out of the furnace that looks orange and yellow just from the heat. Comes out of the furnace at about 2,200 degrees. Every moment that it's out of the heat, it's cooling down, becoming more solid. And as you tool it, it cools a lot more quickly, especially when it's in contact with steel. So it's cooling down the glass, rolling at a consistent angle so the glass is centered on the end of the pipe and isn't wobbling, and also starting a little bubble. You can see, even though you had that hot glass on there that was 2,000 degrees, you're still able to touch the steel table, and that's because the steel can't do that. All right, so he's going to start to color that, touching it down inside those different scoops with different uh, colored glass bits called frit, F-R-I-T. Now, those little bits of glass will heat up almost immediately and stick, and that is, is that a red strawberry or something? Strawberry, so that's going to be a transparent red. Now he has an orange powder. And he's rolling it through the powder, and the powder is collecting between all those little pieces of red. Those little pieces of red weren't completely melted in, so they have a texture to them, and they're cooled down a bit, so they're not collecting much color on those actual pieces of transparent red. So you'll still have all those red transparent windows, but you'll have that orange all in between it. sides by rolling back and forth across the table. Also compresses the bubble straight on the edges. And each time you blows air into it, doesn't quite blow out as much because it's cooling down as it rolls it on the table. So the bubble kind of goes through the center more, making it more like a tube, rather than just a spherical bubble with a lot of solid glass off the tip of it. This will give it more of a consistent wall thickness to the bubble. this bucket, and that's all clear, so we can reuse that. If that gets contaminated with any uh, color, we're not going to be able to reuse that. Pushing the clear glass evenly around the bubble. That also decreases the diameter of the bubble. Solid cast aluminum mold. And it cools the outside of the glass as it makes contact with the interior. And that won't disturb the glass. The glass is kind of like taffy at that point. Still soft enough that it can't crack. Just blowing it into the mold a little bit more. Also pushes the bubble out the top a little. When it comes out, we'll see that low shape on the bubble. He's going to 
compress that bottom a bit. I'll also cool it a touch. The tip of the bubble, that whole front half, is going to be hotter than the back half back where the pipe is. Sits further in the heating unit. Back end is losing heat from the pipe as well. So before we expand the piece out, we're going to usually cool that front end. But he didn't really work on these sides of the back end very much attached to the pipe, so that stayed in the car. So now he's built up a little bit more heat, and that allows this back portion to get hot like the front. Otherwise, it's going to blow thin on the front. Now he's going to use a tool called scissor jacks and start making what's called the jack line. This is a compression line that separates the pipe from the bubble. It's going to help keep the bottom kind of flattened, a little bit compressed. Time to pop it off the pipe, turn it around, attach it to this rod called a punty. It's called the transfer, and transferring it onto this punty rod is essential. Once you pop it off that blow pipe, it's disconnected, but it has that kind of unfinished open end. So, gotta hurry up and shape this before it cools too much. So the material is distributed in such a way that it stays hot where we need it. This will stay attached. So we'll touch that on, it'll stick. It's kind of taffy-like, so it's soft enough that you can attach it and it'll stick, but it's not so hot that it's going to completely melt in or be soft to where the weight pulling down on it will stretch it. Now that it's attached, you can add some stress to that jack line by adding some water to it. That cools it so quickly that it becomes fragile. And a sharp tap from the tool causes the material to shear along the stress line. The rest of the bubble was still hot enough that it wasn't really affected by that vibration. If the bubble had cooled too much, the whole bubble could have cracked. bring this over and you can attach it and shape it the way you want. Wrap this around a couple times. Okay. And move forward. Okay. 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 So we're going to get a little more material once it gets a flash.
more just like the last one. rapidly cooling and if it cools too much it's going to crack into a million pieces so got to get it into this oven or slow cool down overnight. Doug Taylor. 